So today's lecture, we're going to cover what are called free radical reactions. Actually, I think I'm gonna kill my video here. I don't want that in the lecture. Okay. So um, free radical reactions are, <laughs> free radical reactions are uh, reactions that, that go by a completely different and unique mechanism compared to the reactions we have been studying. And in fact, one of the reasons why I've, I put them at this point in the, in the course is that I want us to really have covered a lot of the, what I would call the more typical reactions, which are reactions that involve charged species and two electrons. Um, in contrast to the free radical reactions, which involve single electrons and generally species without charges. And I do that here because otherwise it gets kind of confusing for people. And all of a sudden I start getting all these single electron mechanisms when really those are the exception rather than the rule. Okay, so let's talk about free radicals and their properties. So a free radical is defined as a species with an unpaired electron. So it, this is an example of a carbon radical where these lines are supposed to indicate covalent bonds with two electrons in them. And then instead of having a lone pair up here, what we have is just a single electron. That is the free radical or the radical. Now, um, in terms of naming, um, species with single electrons can often just be called radicals. The original definition of this comes from way old fashioned naming where uh, the carbon groups that we name normally now with YL ending, and we call them carbon groups, used to be called radicals. And it was believed that they were these substructures within molecules, but that they didn't exist by themselves. And it turns out that in the, you know, uh, well, really I'd say the, the most definitive evidence was in the 1930s, um, there were people that studied and they realized that there were reactions, there were mechanisms where these species like a methyl or an ethyl or something like that could exist by itself. And so since at that time they were calling those radicals, they called them free radicals. In other words, radicals that were not attached to anything else. Okay, so that's why technically calling them just radicals is not correct in the old thing, but the usage sort of changed after this. And now anything with a single electron is usually called a radical. So for example, this is a carbon radical. Here's an oxygen radical. Here's a chlorine radical. We could just call this a chlorine atom, okay? So when we look at these radicals, these are going to be intermediates in our uh, uh, elementary reactions. When we look at their properties, we can see if we calculate the formal charge, I'm gonna use the carbon radical as an example, that carbon radical wants, or that carbon atom wants four electrons. And in the free radical state, it's going to have one electron for each of these covalent bonds, plus one electron for the single unpaired electron. So that means it owns four electrons. So when we want four and we own four, and we take the difference between those, we can see that that leaves us with zero, meaning that free radical has no net charge. And in fact, that's very typical. Most free radicals have no net charge. There are some exceptions that we're not gonna see in our, our course. They're more advanced organic chemistry. Even though they're uncharged, they are 
unstable and they're very reactive because they don't have complete octets. So when they started studying <clears throat> carbon radicals in particular, they realized that there was sort of this weird in between place, right? Where if you had no electron right there, then clearly that would be what we would call an electron deficient species. It would not have enough electrons. Carbocations don't have enough electrons. They have positive charges. They attract things with negative charges. And if you recall from carbocations, they're stabilized by attaching carbon groups. Furthermore, carbocations, because they don't have any electrons, they have an empty p orbital and their trigonal planar. In contrast, if we had two electrons right there, a lone pair on a carbon has a negative charge. That, um, because we would then have four electron groups around that carbon, that would have uh, a tetrahedral geometry and it would be tetrahedral. So the question is, if you have only one, what is it more like? Is it like it's missing an electron or is it like it has an extra electron? And it turns out the answer is that they behave like they are missing an electron, electron deficient speaking, species. So it turns out that that single electron doesn't repel neighboring electron groups. So if you recall in our VSEPR, right, valence shell electron pair repulsion, that model basically said that pairs of electrons repel each other. So it turns out that a single electron doesn't act like a pair of electrons, doesn't repel. As a result, the carbon radical looks something like this. Here are the three covalent bonds. They are repelling each other and becoming trigonal planar. And then there's a p orbital. It's not empty, however. It has one electron in it. So the carbon is trigonal planar. It's sp2 hybridized. And the unpaired electron is in an unhybridized orbital, a p orbital. And that's going to have uh, an impact later when we look at stereochemistry. 